Good evening, fuckheads. So, I needed to jump on here and let everyone know the Dusty Shed Wood Company will be with us till the end of January or the beginning of January. I don't really remember how that conversation went, but so they will be sticking with us for another month or two here, maybe three. I think it's just two though. Um, and for LL Cool Tea that's out there listening, you can hear the water sloshing around a little bit and yeah, it is water. I am in the bathtub. Because I am fucking sore. So I'm having a cooler and a nice hot bath. Because I was working outside today in this stupid blizzard we've been having. It's like uh, winter was just going nope, 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 nope. And then Halloween rolled around, went past. November 2nd, my mom's 60th birthday would have been. And the fucking winter decided it was coming and coming hard and fast. I am not impressed about it at all. But whatever is what it is. That's what happens where you live where the wind hurts your face and you don't have spiders that can kill you so I guess you take the good with the bad I'm not a big fan of the kill me spiders anyway so but uh, on one quick more note touching over to the Dusty Shedwood Company if you happen to be out around the TP Creek area I believe it's next weekend uh, the TP Creek does a TP Creek does a TP Creek Cowboy Christmas Market. So stop in, see the Dusty Wood Shed Company family, buy some stuff, or just pop in, find their booth, go meet them, and see the incredible stuff they do. Um, it sounds like we are going to be doing a giveaway. So, you need to start buying some stuff. It's because the way that it sounds like we're going to do that is for every 5 or $10 you spend at the Dusty Shed Wood Company, you will have a name put in. But when you make your order with them, you need to make sure they know that you heard about them on Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy and that Bob's Bob sent ya. And another thing that uh, I gotta give a shout out to Dave Welch even though he is kind of a dickhead by pointing out that my name as well is Dave. But there was many, many, many of us. Um, We all had nicknames because there were so many of us. It was like Justin's. There were so many Justin's kicking around. Something about that Gen X time frame, I guess. I don't know. But to... All my Dave is out there that are listening. Um, Coxie. Awesome. The bomb. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't need to say much more. You know you're the bomb. Then there was Chewy. I don't think Chewy listens though. We probably got stoned and forgot to do this. Because, well, 
Chewy's a pothead from way, way back. And there's a few more Daves, but I'm just not going to sit here and name them all off this time. But if you're one of my uh, listeners and you're one of my bros and your name was Dave, except Dave Welch, fuck that guy, then I appreciate you listening. Share, subscribe, kick this stuff out here. Get lots of people listening. We're doing pretty good. Way, way more than I ever thought it was going to. But apparently y'all like my fucked up stories. So, I guess we're going to start on a night where I was with baby Ray and another person who will call 45. (laughs) Because that's who it was, was 45. And Baby Ray had, I want to say it was a 79 Trans Am with T-tops. It was at the mechanic shop and he couldn't afford to pay the bill, so they were holding on to it for a couple of days. And we got the bright idea that we should try and steal his own car from the mechanic shop because they had it parked outside. Well, Baby Ray had no clue. Me and 45 figured for sure we could get it going. So we get the hood pop, we're messing around with it. And uh, I wish I was a little smarter back then. I knew a little bit more about vehicles than what I do now. Before I could uh, African engineer something to get it going. I don't want to say the N-word because if I say the N-word, I'm probably going to get cancelled. And uh, so we af- I, we were trying to African engineer things to get it going, but I didn't have the African engineering knowledge at the time that I did that I do now. Well, me and Forty Five were in there trying to get this friggin' thing going. Baby Ray disappears. Both of us were like, "What the fuck? Where'd he go?" We weren't too far from. One of our favorite liquor stores, and we were pretty gassed up already. So, we figured maybe Baby Ray just went and grabbed some more beers. Well, about five, ten minutes later, me and 45 have decided we're not going to be able to get it fucking going. And uh, 45, we missed one step. That was it. <laughs> But uh, Baby Ray pulls back in, and he had acquired a one-ton dump truck, and that's all I will say about that truck, and we were going to head out to one of our little towns to go and party at, because a girl that me and 45 had both seen, oh, I just air quoted again, and by seen, I meant we had both slept with, and I think baby Ray figured he was going to get his shot with her, and so we started heading out that direction with, I think we had 36 beers, something like that, so we started heading out of town, and we got about... 20 minutes, half hour out, and Baby Ray decided he wanted to see if that one-ton dump truck would go through a road sign down in the ditch, not realizing there was probably three feet of fucking water in the ditch. So, needless to say, that dump truck stalled out on us and then I don't think we got it started but even if we did we wouldn't have been able to get it out because it was pretty heavy truck and it was pretty fucking wet so we got the bright idea to grab our beers and start hitchhiking well we're hitchhiking down the road and uh Nobody seems to want to pick us up, probably because we are three 
relatively drunk males walking down the highway in the middle of the night, a mile or two down the road from a truck in the ditch. And packing, like, probably a 2-4 beer at that time, maybe a couple more, but it would have been at least a 2-4. Nobody wanted to stop. Nobody wanted to stop. Then, all of a sudden, we get out in front of this farmhouse, and this kid pulls up next to us in a welding truck. He looks at us, and he goes... Where are you boys headed? <coughs> Told them where we were headed. He said, well, I'm going home. Hop in. <coughs> so we hop in. We figure we'll get a little bit closer to where we want to go. And we get into one of the little towns a couple of miles away. And we've got... Me, 45, and baby Ray piled in the front seat of a regular cab welding truck. He pulls over at the bar, hops out, says, enjoy the truck, boys. I borrowed it a few hours ago. Well, instead of us being smart and <laughs> continuing on our way on foot, one of the boys, I believe it was Baby Ray, jumped into the driver's seat. And off we went. And we continued on our way. And we were having a blast. I was sitting bitch. Uh, drinking my beers. Baby Ray was drinking. 45 was drinking. I believe we were about another 45 minutes down the road we had just passed through another small town and all of a sudden the two-way radio in that truck comes on and somebody is saying get out of that welding truck you little sons of bitches i've been chasing you for three hours well i'm way too drunk to be driving and dealing with that. Baby Ray wasn't the greatest of drivers at, at the best of times. Well, one thing I can say about 45. That motherfucker will never turn down a challenge. Never did. So, all of a sudden, I get told, get my left foot over on the throttle. And Baby Ray is going to climb up over top of me. He's steering with my foot on the throttle after we've turned off the highway on a gravel road and killed all the lights with the first click down on the e-brake. So this is going on in the dark. We, Me and 45 both knew the road, so we knew it was straight. And Baby Ray climbs over top of me. My foot's on the throttle. And Baby Ray was steering as he was climbing over. I took the steering wheel. 45 started climbing over top of me. He took the steering wheel back because he could see and I couldn't. And then once he got himself figured out in that seat, he took the throttle back over. Well, at this time, we hear this radio start going off again. And this guy who we had inadvertently, well, we didn't steal his truck. We took possession of a stolen truck. So we were in the wrong. <clears throat> he comes back on the radio again and starts freaking out. Where did you fucks go? Blah, 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 blah. I know where you're headed. I know where you're headed. There's only one place this highway goes to. So, of course... We don't say nothing. Why incriminate yourself? But 45 keeps driving the acquired truck nice and slowly down this gravel road. And we know the gravel road's out that way. Apparently, this guy didn't very well. So we came in on the north end of the town we were headed to. And this guy must have been watching all the major 
the, the two major highways in. <coughs> one's kind of from the south. The other one's kind of from, it would be the west, I guess. But we came in from, like, the northeast. Or no. <coughs> we came in on the northwest. And the two he was watching kind of come in from the south and the southeast. And we went over to this person's house and had a couple of drinks and then things weren't going well and we realized that that truck was getting low on fuel so we fueled it up at one of the local convenience stores and i mean we fueled it up i don't remember yeah it, was, it would have been me and 45 that ended up putting the full tank of diesel in that thing And then we're rolling out of town, and we had to stop so I could puke. And I decided to lay down in the ditch. 45 says I passed out in a puddle of water and was blowing bubbles, and he had to pull me out. And when he pulled me out, apparently I screamed at him, let me die here, and just leave me to die. Now... Kind of don't remember that. I kind of remember getting back into the truck being wet. The next thing I truthfully remember is waking up in the left lane of the highway with a semi blowing his fucking air horn. And yeah, I was driving. So why those, and those two were sitting there drinking beers, laughing and smacking me when the air horn started to blow. So what was going on in their heads to put a guy into this driver's seat <laughs> that just had to be pulled out of a ditch because he was trying, well, he was going to drown himself basically. <laughs> So you drag him out of the out of the puddle in the ditch. He tells you, "Fuck it, leave me here to die." Then you put him in the driver's seat. But at this point, we got some wild, wild idea that we could take this truck to a major city <clears throat> and go find one of the <coughs> chop shops that we knew of. <coughs> Which, by the way, is no longer there anymore. And even if it was, I wouldn't tell you. Because I ain't no rat. And we got close to home. And we decided we weren't going to do it because we were out of beers. And we were all kind of starting to somewhat sober up. So we went and parked it up on the north end of town. And it still had more fuel in it than when we got it. Because it was at like three quarters of a tank. So we never did any damage to the truck. We parked it. We wiped everything down. To clean it and be nice. I'm full of shit. We wiped it down so our prints weren't there. But we took all our garbage out of it. Everything. Locked it. Put the key, put the keys in one of the oil patch favorite hiding spots, because the keys were in it still. And we walked away. Never heard nothing about it again. Nothing ever turned up on the news. So I don't know. It was a weird, weird fucking night. We tried to start it off by stealing our friend's vehicle and couldn't figure it out because we were too drunk and stupid so then he went and acquired a vehicle from somewhere i still don't know where he acquired it from <laughs> and then we acquired a stolen truck from somebody that picked us up as we were hitchhiking <laughs> so that's some pretty crazy story that one I kind of wish I could get one of those boys with me to recoup some of it. Because, as I say, I was pretty messed up for the majority of my young years. And uh, 
I've actually get some phone calls from some of the boys after an episode drops, and they tell me that, uh, well, that isn't quite how I remember it. And I need to apologize for the quality on that one where I had McQuagmire on with me last weekend. And because of that issue, I didn't have my remote recording session with Waffle's cousin yet. Trying to figure it out. Um, if anybody knows a way to record specific phone calls through an app, a free app, because I'm doing this for fun for you guys and for my mental health. So if you know a free app that would be good for, well, I want to record a phone call with McQuagmire or Waffles Cousin or Hillbilly or 45 or LL Cool T or Funk or anybody else, then I could do that. Just make the dial the call, hit the record button, do it that way. Then I'm still doing it off my phone. We're still being raw and cheap. So you, if you have any ideas for that, you can shoot me an email as always. Tales of a messed up northern boy at gmail.com. Or make a post on either the page that Fuckhead Dave Welch started, which is Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy Official, or the actual one that I started, which is just called Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy Podcast, I think is what it's called. Or hit me up on Facebook and friend me. Bob's Bob's. Same picture on there as my profile picture on my Podbean. Can't miss it. And share the hell out of my stuff. Like the hell out of my stuff. And uh, I know I was doing, I was on a fucking roll there for a while. I was dropping an episode like every two or three days, hey? And then I was like, fuck this. I'm putting too much effort into it. <clears throat> and I needed some time off. So I basically said on Facebook the one day that it was going to be a little bit of time before the next one dropped. And somebody told me to shit or get off the pot. And like I tell my brothers over at... Uh, the Blue Collar Philosophers, and if you haven't listened to them yet, get over there, check them out. Um, like I tell them all the time, because they always say consistency, consistency, consistency. And I understand why they do it, because when they don't drop a new episode on a Wednesday like they're supposed to, I get pissed right off. <laughs> but I have always said, Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy will be consistently inconsistent these episodes will drop like turds on my ass when I feel they need out they'll drop so remember tell me a good way to do that off of an app or you know hit me up on the Facebooks and tell me you want to send me a microphone and shit to hook up to my laptop so that I can do those remote ones. I know that's not going to happen. And I don't give a fuck. I'll figure it out one way or another. Because that's what I do. I will survive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess, like I said at the beginning, we have kept. Our trial sponsorship going with the Dusty Shed Wood Company for a little longer. And we will be doing a giveaway. And it sounds like we're going to be doing it off of a draw basis. So, get over there. Check something out. Buy a set of chopsticks. That should get your name in. At least once. 
for the draw. But remember, when you place your order, who'd you hear it on? Oh, I heard one of you. Russ just said it. I think Papa Large did. And, uh, yeah, on that note, I guess I'll let you know. Don't walk a mile in my shoes, because that won't fucking impress me. Live 30 seconds in my head. You will understand why I am a messed up Neverland boy. And these are my motherfucking tales. Oh, and one more thing. Go check out Tom McDonald's new song. The new one that just dropped. I believe it's called Soldier. It's a gooder. I love Tom McDonald. If anybody knows Tom McDonald, tell him to listen. I know nobody can tell him to listen. But he, I'd love to have him do intro music for me, because that would be fucking wicked. All right. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend.